mailbag time, let's see what we've got in these ones. Ah, oh, excellent. Right, let's hope these are the right ones. So these are motors for air conditioning systems on cars, right? So, or vent systems on cars. These particular ones are for Toyota. So here is the one that's for my car now, this thing here, and it's failed. Basically the motor's gone on it. I've done some video and stuff on this. There will be a video about me fixing the air conditioning system in my car, so watch out for that if you're interested, if you own a Toyota. And I've found these replacement units, which are obviously salvaged ones. They're not brilliant condition. They're not new, they are definitely used parts. As long as it works, I don't care, to be honest. Basically we've got this piece here, which we'll push onto here to transfer the gear over. And these are um, 063800-172POS. All right, it's probably easier to see on this one. So two of those. So my one's failed. So I bought two replacements, thinking that at least I've got two replacements, there's a chance I can still fix it. If they both work, then great, I've got a spare for the next time it fails, because these are known for failing. They're quite common failures. I think I probably paid too much for these. These are not new parts, they're obviously used parts. Very obviously used. So, yeah, we'll see. I probably did pay too much for them. It's all part of the fun, isn't it? Get the links down below for various items as well. If I show a mailbag, there's a really good chance there's a link down below for them. So this is a bunch of uh, clips for Toyotas, these are. It's an, an assortment, a bunch of different ones. Like these are door clips, trim panels, screw type ones, half a screw type one, the other half somewhere, different type here, smaller ones. When you do work on cars, you often find that you need to replace clips. They get broken and then things like that, or they get missing or they fall out sometimes, or you know, someone else has worked on the car and you find there's clips missing from it or whatever. Having a assortment of clips is really handy to have. Now I've got a, a quite a large section already, but not quite the ones I needed. So I've got some more. What it came about from the clips was that um, my wife's car had a bit of a ding. Someone reversed into it with a full course, believe it or not. Forklift truck reversed into it. I'm not going to go there. Anyway, it popped the clips out from the bumper, stuff like that. So there's clips missing from it and things like that. That's why I wanted to get some more clips because some of the ones that she needed for her car weren't there. I just didn't have clips which fitted properly, so that's why I got those. Anyway, these are some big, I think these were 40 millimeters or something like that. 45, here we go, 45 millimeters, actually, my time, 45 mil. I need this for my car, put this in the floor of my car. Because I found that when we had the flooding and I got my car wet inside when I drove through some flood waters, it wasn't that deep. Well, it was deep enough. <laughs> and it turns out the uh, there was one of these bungs missing from the floor of my car, so the water came straight through the hole in the floor. I realised now that there's a hole in the floor, so I've got some rubber bungs to replace them. I only need one, but they come in a pack of ten, so I'd probably never use the other nine. But I've got the one I need. That's the main thing. And it's some more clips. These were a different style. It's got like a pin which you push in. So you've got this base piece like that. And then there's a pin like this which you push in to lock them in place. You push them in so far and it locks it and you push it in again and it unlocks it because it gives it a depression to go back into. So it's like two stages. So you can push it in, locks it, push it in again and it unlocks it. And you can pull the clip out and reset it. Loads of those. And more clips. Also, don't go away. I've got some bits of test gear. I'm going to show a piece of test gear each mailbag video I do. These are bits of test gear which I've acquired and I haven't featured them yet. So I'm going to show you a piece of test gear as well at the end of this video. All right, so make sure you stick around, keep watching. So I've got some more clips here. Same kind of deal, push clips. We've got a face here and we've got a pin which goes into the inside of them. Which is in this case is a screw type fitting. Same as one of these other bags, actually, same as those. But loads of different ones, different sizes. Again, just getting a source ones. And this is some more of this other style. Like that. Yeah. I never get carried away. It never happens. I've got a black pen on my finger again. Okay, this is a case for an iPhone 6S Plus, or 6 Plus even, does both. I've already got a case like this, exactly the same. 
it's been working fine. I've had it for a while now. I just did a video on that phone when I repaired it, and I've been using the phone ever since. I actually quite like this older style phone, the iPhone 6S Plus and the 6S, because they've got the headphone jack. You know, the screens you can replace them without much hassle. The only hassle is if you've got a touch ID and you have to replace logic board or something like that, or touch or the home button, which is not common. You have to do it really. So, so yeah, you don't have to mess around with them too much. So, I quite like this older style phone. Yes, it's an old phone, it still works fine. You know, why change? I mean, yes, the camera could be nicer, but it does all right. Anyway, this case is basically it's a knockoff of the uh, what's that brand called? I've forgotten now. I've gone, but anyway, it's a knockoff of the other brand. Rubber casing on the outside, plastic shell. It's got some foam on the inside as well. What's happened to my one is this piece here, this swivel on the belt clip is worn out. It's tending to spin around a bit. I'm a bit worried about breaking off, so I thought I'd get another one before it does fail. The case itself for the phone is perfectly fine, but the holster is starting to fail on mine. And this is something which goes back to my air conditioning stuff in my car. Another thing, the little cans you can get a refrigerant. So the R134A refrigerant cans, which have a threaded top on them. And you can basically screw this onto the can. It's got a little needle in there which pierces the can. Needle there, it pierces the can. So you screw it down, pierce the can. And also you have the hose here coming off to your gauge set to top up your air conditioning. Not particularly exciting, but you may need one. I don't know. Do you? Here's a piece of test gear, as promised. I've been showing some other bits of gear which I picked up recently in other mailbags, which I picked up locally, and I've got a few more things to cover yet. I'm going to show one thing each mailbag, so make sure you check them out if you're interested in what I'm getting. There will be videos on each of these items as well when I'm doing these repairs and stuff like that, or refurbishments, whatever I need to do to them. Do you know what this is yet? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's a Marconi, and it even came with its protective cover on the front, which is really amazing. And it's got this storage cover case thing in here, which I don't think has got anything in it. No, it's completely empty. That's fine, but if you wanted to store something in there, you could, I suppose. Maybe cables or something. It's an AF power meter, 893C. Now, I think I've got the original 893, which is a big thing. It's, it's vertical facing, and it's not as nice as this. But I believe I've got the original one in a drawer somewhere. And this is a more modern version. So basically what this does is you can inject a signal into here from like a amplifier or something like that or some audio output device into this thing. You've got multiple impedances, both these two knobs adjust the impedance and here you've got the power ratings so you can go up to 30 watts or down to 300 micro watts so it's quite a good range and you can do like times one scale or we'll set that's 2.5 ohms all the way up to a times 1000 I think it is I quite see it. Yeah, times 1000 of up to 20 ohms or 8 ohms, depending on which scale you're in. Yeah, that can do quite a wide range of resistances on simulation. So, this is basically simulating a speaker, and you can see how much power is going into it. So, if you wanted to test an audio amplifier which normally runs at 8 ohms, for example, you'd have that 8 over here, bring this round to that times 1, 8 ohms, and you could change whatever power rating you needed for this actual simulation. So, if you wanted a 30 watt scale, um, you could do that from here, and then you could find out how much power your amplifier is putting out. It's a simple device, really. And I, so I do have an older version of this, but this is much nicer. It also has the Sonad meter in it as well, one kilohertz Sonad filter. So you need to check for that as well. So if you're testing a RF transmitter, you can hook this up to the receiver, and you can check the Sonad at the same time. I'll be doing a proper video on this thing later on, and uh, pulling it apart and have a look inside, see what's actually inside it and obviously powering up and trying it out. So watch out for that. Check out the videos down below. There's a subscribe link over here if you're not subscribed yet. There's a Patreon support link over there if you want to donate to the channel, help me to buy a business to play with. Like this. Catch you later.